my name is Will Carmack and in today's After Effects tutorial I'm going to be showing you six different effects that they use in the Beast Game show on Amazon Prime. From the cool pop-ups like the X's that are tracked onto people, how to isolate a single color like they do in the flashbacks, getting this really cool cinematic isolated color look. The CCTV, face tracking, all of it. This video is going to be a masterclass for everybody who wants to make a ripoff of Beast Games. You're welcome. Before we get started, I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So we'll start with our first effect, which is isolating a single color, like they do in the flashbacks in the Beast Games. So here we have our fictional Beast Games character, and in our effects and presets panel, we're gonna type in Lumetri and grab Lumetri color. We'll put that on our clip, and right here you'll see curves, we'll drop down curves. Right here you have hue and saturation, which lets you isolate different colors. We're gonna create a pinpoint on either side of all the colors but blue. And then we'll just grab extra points and desaturate every thing other than the blue line and bam just like that you've achieved your effect let's say this scene right here is a flashback like I just said Lumetri color you drop down the curves panels and you just create pinpoints and crank down everything but the blue line so now when we watch that back we have achieved the iconic look of a Mr. Beast games flashback scene Effect number two is the Elimination X. These pop up the second a player is eliminated, and they will continue to stay tracked onto somebody's body. So you'll notice the X is a little stylized. If we zoom in close on it, you'll see it's got these lines and this noise inside of it. So what we're gonna do is in our project panel, we'll click on this button here to create a new composition, and we're gonna name it X. We're gonna hit Control Y to create a new solid. And in effects and presets, we're gonna type in Fractal, and then Fractal Noise. Under Noise Type, we're gonna set it to block and over here in transform we're going to turn the scale down really small basically looking like noise we're creating the simulated noise inside of the x so you'll see right here evolution we're going to hold alt and click on it and we're going to type in the expression time asterisk 1000 so now we've created our own noise so now what i'm going to do is in the effects and presets i'll type in tint and i'll map the whites to red and I'll map the black to just a little bit of a darker red. This will be the inside of our X. So now we'll grab our text tool and we'll type in the letter X. We'll make it really big, kind of fill the comp up with this X here. So now over here in the layers panel, we're gonna grab our solid and we're gonna grab the track map pick whip and attach it to the X. So now our noise is only located where the X is. And in the show, you see that they have a white stroke around them. So we're gonna right click on our solid, go to layer styles, and we're gonna select stroke. And so down here in our stroke options, we'll crank up the size and we'll change it to white. So now we have this beautiful Mr. Beast X. And so now how do we put it onto our characters like this, tracked onto their body? So for now, we'll hop into a new composition where we will put the X on these characters. So over in the right, we'll go to tracker panel and we'll do track motion. The numbers on these jerseys have really sharp and clear points. So once you have like a high contrast point of number on a shirt selected like this, and the tracker panel will just analyze forward. And see, it does an absolute incredible job of tracking your character. And once you like your track, we'll come up to layer, new and null object. And in the tracker panel, we'll edit target and select this null number one. And then we'll hit apply and okay. So now we see we have his body tracked right here. So go back to our project panel and we'll grab our X and drag that into this composition. We'll just put that over top of his body and we'll grab the parent and link tool in the layers panel and attach it to the null object. So now you can tell a homie's been eliminated. And as you can see here, I have tracked multiple of the players so I can add multiple X's at once. We can duplicate our X's, put it on the players, and we'll just, we just need to make sure that the parent and link is connected to the right player. The way the X's pop on to the eliminated players is they start big and get small. So we'll grab the X and we'll create a keyframe for scale move it over a few frames and then scale it up really big. And then we'll grab those two keyframes and right click keyframe assistant and easy ease. We're just gonna make a curve like this so it starts fast and slow. So this is what it looks like. And right now we'll hit T to drop down opacity and create two keyframes, one at 100 and one at zero as it's getting smaller. So it kind of pops up like this. And if you have multiple X's like in this instance, you can actually copy these keyframes and paste it on all the other other X's. So you can have a moment like this 
or if you move all the keyframes over just a little bit, you can stagger the X's. So in the Beast games, you'll see that the X's have these little lines across them. So to do that, in effects and presets, we'll type in Venetian blind right here. We'll double click on that and put it on our X. We're gonna crank the completion up. You see the lines there. And then under direction, we'll change it to 90. And we can play around with the width of the lines. And we're just gonna make these relatively small, like maybe just like this. And then in effects and presets, we'll type in glow. Cause these X's be glowing. And then you just want to crank up your glow radius and maybe even your glow intensity And actually we're gonna grab our Venetian blinds and put it on top of our glow And then we can just copy and paste those effects on the other X's and bam now you've got your beast games Elimination animation and we can combine these first two effects just like this and then along with the X's It's just beautiful classic Mr. Beast games so now effect number three is when they win money and the money sign pops up with an animated counter. So I'm gonna show you how to make an animated counter in After Effects with this pop-up of a money sign. So you can see here, kid scores a goal on his dad and I animated the, the money pop-up. It's just like in Beast Games. So very similar to the X, we're gonna start by creating a new composition and we're just gonna call it money sign. Hit Control Y to create a solid. And we can actually just go to our X composition and we'll copy the fractal noise intent effect from that one and just paste it onto this layer here. But we're gonna change the tint effect to be green. So if you watch, we've got this stylized green texture. So grab our text tool, select our money sign, and then we'll grab the track mat pick whip in After Effect and link it to the money sign. So now we have this beautiful textury money sign. We'll right click on this layer, layer styles, stroke. We'll make the stroke big and we'll change it to black. It's absolutely beautiful. So now for the counter, we're gonna grab our text tool and I'll type in, let's say, I'll just type in 100 to start. So what we're gonna do is in effects and presets, we're gonna type in slider. And we're gonna attach slider to the text layer. And if we drop down our text layer in the layers panel, source text right here, we'll grab the pick whip tool and attach it to the slider. So now you can see we can animate the text amount to go up. And so now to give this animation a comma and a money sign as it goes up, we're gonna open up our source text expression where we added this. We're gonna select everything, delete it, and we're just going to type in this expression here. It's in the description below. You can just copy and paste it. I don't know what any of it means, but now when we crank up the slider, um, if we go past a thousand, it'll give us a comma and we have our money sign. So to get this to count up, we'll create a keyframe right here for slider and I'll type in a thousand. And then over just a few seconds, I'll type this to then be 10,000. So now if you watch that back, it's animating the counter to go up. We're just gonna make this a few frames long and I'll easy ease these keyframes. Actually, I'll type it to go to 30,000. So your animation will look like this. So now here we have our footage. What we need to do is similar to the X, we're gonna track this kid's head. So go to tracker panel track motion and I tracked the shadow of his eye and you can see here once his head is fully tracked we'll go to layer new null object and we'll edit the target and select the new null object and so now his head is perfectly tracked so we'll grab our money sign from our project panel and we'll place it above our kid's head right here and then we'll grab the parent and link and attach it to the null seven and then we're going to animate it like the x so where it starts counting right here we're going to create a keyframe for scale and move it over a few frames and then scale it up really big easy ease those two keyframes and make this super sexy s curve with the graph so it starts fast and slow so when he scores the money pops up above his head and of course, this is a Mr. Beast animation. We need to make it more exciting. In effects and presets, we'll type in our glow effect. Crank up the radius to make it nice and glowy. That looks beautiful. And then in effects and presets, we'll type in Venetian blinds, change the direction to 90, and we'll just crank that up. So we get our iconic Mr. Beast lines, and we'll hit T to drop down opacity, and we'll create two keyframes for opacity, scaling it from zero to 100 as it comes down. So if you watch in slow motion, it fades in right over his head. And then to top off the money animation, when it pops on screen, it's extremely glowy. We'll grab our another glow effect and bring that onto our money sign. We'll make it like as bright as possible. We like it popping on bright like this, but to get rid of it, we're actually gonna hit E and we're gonna select glow too. And under compositing options, we'll create a keyframe for effect opacity. And as it goes from big to small, we'll just hit 
zero. So when it pops up, it has that big glowy pop. So effect number four is the glow pop. When they want to single out a single player, sometimes they'll desaturate the background, animate the person to be glowing, or when they're showing off like the dynamics of a team, they'll flash and pop through all of them. And you can see here in After Effects, I've replicated this look perfectly, and I'm gonna show you how I've done it. So this one's really easy. We'll take our footage and we'll grab our rotoscope brush tool and we'll just select the character we want to isolate. I'll select this guy here. And once you have your mask, you can hit freeze. And then when you've masked out all the characters you want, it'll look something like this. So what we're gonna do is we'll set our mask to add. So now our character is bright. And in effects and presets, we'll grab tint and we'll set it to whatever color we want the flash to be. And then in effects and presets, we'll type in Venetian blinds, set the direction to 90, and then crank up the transition completion. And then with width, we'll make the lines small like this. That looks perfect. And then we'll type in glow, crank up the radius. You can play around with the threshold, which will make it brighter. So what we're gonna do is create a keyframe for amount to tint and also glow radius and glow intensity. We're just gonna go over like one or two frames. We're gonna we're gonna set the amount of tint to zero, and then the glow actually really bright, like this. Maybe even crank up the radius. So it starts bright and ends dim. So we get this little pop effect. And now we're gonna create a keyframe for opacity. Move that over a few frames and then start it at zero. So it pops on like this, a little pop. Sounds like the apocalypse is happening outside. And then over a few seconds, we'll animate the glow intensity to be zero, the amount of tint to be zero, and the opacity to be zero. So you can see it's just like a little flash. And so if you copy and paste that effect onto your other characters, you can see here, you can animate them to all pop at once, like in this scene in the Beast games or you can select the keyframes and drag them over just a few different seconds so they'll pop in different sequences. Or another way they utilize this effect is we'll take this character right here in the middle, we'll put Lumetri color on the background clip and we'll do the thing with the curves where we isolate just the blues. We'll crank up the contrast to make it all dark. And we're just gonna copy and paste that Lumetri color onto our mask. And then we'll grab the glow effect and put that onto our character. We'll crank down the threshold so more of them is bright. Crank up the radius and the glow intensity. Something like that works really well. So we'll create a keyframes for the Lumetri color. So it starts at normal color and then turns black and white and we'll just create keyframes for opacity on our masked out layer so as everything turns black and white he remains saturated and he starts glowing this is so mr beast games are you kidding me right now and of course you can attach everything to a null object or pre-compose it and create keyframes for scale and position so over time you can zoom in on him just like in mr beast games and so now next up is the tracked faces cctv camera thing that they did when they were identifying everybody's like best friends it's a super cool effect where everything is desaturated except for the TV box. So of course, like a lot of these effects, we're gonna go to our tracker panel, track motion, and I'm gonna track this girl's face. So you can see her face is tracked. Let's come up to the shape layer and grab the rectangle tool. And we're just gonna make a box over her face. Hold down shift to make it an even square. So we're actually gonna keep this rectangle, but this part's important. Right now, we're gonna duplicate this. So we have two squares and we're gonna make the first square invisible. And on this top square, we're gonna click on fill up here and get rid of it. So we just have the stroke. So we're just gonna crank up the stroke on this square layer and we're gonna attach both of these squares to null number nine. So they're tracked on, but the square underneath of it is a full square. Why is that? Well, if you come up to layer new and adjustment layer, we can grab the track mat and attach it to that first full square. So the square is gonna be invisible. And so now look what happened. If we type in effects and presets and do hue and saturation, we can crank saturation all the way down to zero. And you can see it's only made her face in this box black and white. But if we hit alpha mat on this adjustment layer, now everything except where the square was is black and white. And we can add anything to this adjustment layer. For example, 
we can add Venetian blinds again, because if you see in the CCTV footage uh, in Beast games, there's these little lines, so we can make those ourselves. Oh, and let's put the adjustment layer underneath of our shape layer. And we'll play with the width until we get a CCTV footage look that we like. And so now we have this beautiful look with the box. And so now to make all of the sexy stylizing of it, we can grab our text tool. I'll name this girl Sam. I'll put it on top of everything. I'll make the characters really small and I'll get rid of the stroke. And in the show, it was Sam underscore and the whatever number I'll do one, two, three. And we put that down at corner, small. And then in effects presets, we'll add glow to both of these um, white layers. We can just copy and paste this glow onto our text layer. And it's important to add the text layer. If you grab its pick whip, you just attach it to the null object that's tracked onto your head. Oh, and with this adjustment layer, you can add a Lumetri color to it. And I can crank up the contrast on this uh, Lumetri color and maybe the shadows a little bit. And bam, that's how you do the CCTV footage from Beast Games. And that is how you do all the visual effects tricks from Beast Games. I hope everybody learned something new in this tutorial. And now it's time to thank my incredible spot Sponsor, Squarespace. I have to introduce to you Squarespace's design intelligence. You might not know this about me, but I have the biggest collection of vintage life magazines in the world. And I want to create a site showing off this American history in a really pretty way. And so with Squarespace's design intelligence, I can create a website that looks perfect and vibey. So with these vintage magazines, maybe some cool vintage looking shapes to show off some covers. A nice color scheme that really matches the dark tones of these magazines. And if I need some assistance, they have award-winning templates. So I actually have a lot of duplicates of these vintage magazines and I wanna sell them as collector's items to other people. And what's amazing about that is Squarespace has online stores you can create. So if you have products, whether that's jewelry, plants, vintage magazines, you can create a beautiful online store with Squarespace. And even better, Squarespace Payments is endless. They have all the popular payment methods like Klarna and Afterpay, all the buy now, pay later options. And if you don't think Squarespace is incredible yet, well, how about the fact that they gave me a code to give you for 10% off your first website or domain. So go get a discount on creating a website that will bolster your image as a professional. Really anybody can benefit from having an amazing website. So build it with Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day.